Hi, I'm Tori L. Ridgewood. That's my writing name, my pseudonym, and this is the first novel in a series I wrote called the Talbot Trilogy. So I'm going to read you a little bit of this section. Grant had already investigated two other discoveries of mutilated animals before dawn. As he pulled up to the third, somehow he wasn't surprised to see Raven standing in the, on the street a short distance away from another distraught woman in a pink bathrobe and slippers who was sobbing violently into a red checked tea towel. He recognized her as a Mrs. Helga Stevenson. She was about 60 with a grizzled perm and thick glasses that hung on a chain around her neck. She had been one of his high school teachers, famous for slapping the desks with a meter stick when the students weren't paying attention. Putting the vehicle in park, he noted with professional detachment that Miss, Mrs. Stevenson was frequently shooting dark looks at Raven, whose arms were crossed and shoulders hunched, half turned away from the clearly accusatory glares. His professional detachment slipped for a moment, though, as his awareness focused unwillingly on the younger woman. The black, thigh-length, cowl-necked sweater failed to hide the delectable curves of breast and hip. Gray leggings emphasized her shapely calves, and her red hair was barely tamed into a ponytail reaching halfway down her back. In the corner of his mind, he willed her to turn around so that he could get a better view from the back, wondering what the nape of her neck looked like. And then she raised her eyes to look directly at him, and time stopped. His heart was beating, thundering in his ears. Goosebumps raised, rose along his arms and ran down his spine, a visceral response to stimuli he couldn't begin to define. He couldn't look away, and for the space of several heartbeats, he didn't want to. Her full lips, pale in the morning light, parted slightly. Then a crackle from the radio brought Grant back to himself. Taking a deep breath, he wrenched himself back to his purpose once more cursing Raven Woods for coming back into his life and ruining his peace. Although he had about a half an hour to go until the official end of his graveyard shift, he was heading into overtime. The little red headache was the last thing he needed. His former teacher was now waving frantically at him. He sighed internally, anticipating the various directions this investigation could take and determined that he would be thorough but brief. The initial interview did not go well. As soon as he had exited the police vehicle, the older woman rushed toward him, alternatively wailing and screeching incomprehensibly. Taking her by the shoulders and easing her away from his dampened uniform, he began by asking, what happened? That witch killed my Farley. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Raven cringe for an instant and then stand straighter, face flaming. A few scraggly hairs had fallen in front of her eyes. Mrs. Stevenson went on, punctuating her complaint with despairing sniffs and sobs. I came out to give Farley his breakfast, and I saw her. She killed him for some satanic ritual. I know it. She pointed one shaking, manicured finger at Raven, who refused to look away. She was like that when I caught her, and when I taught her one of the devil's whores with her spells and witchcraft. Okay, now, ma'am, that's enough, Grant stopped her, stepping into her line of sight. He could feel his anger building, though some of what his former teacher was saying was interesting. Apparently, he hadn't been the only one to observe that unexplained events happened when Raven was around. Did you actually see her kill your dog? I didn't have to. The older woman dried her tears with a, wiped her tears with a dry edge of her towel and adjusted her robe, gaining control of herself. I just know she did it. That girl is capable of murder, as you very well know, Grant Michaels. Animals first, the innocent and vulnerable and defenseless. If you don't stop her now, she, more will die. It will be people next, mark my words. We don't want witches in this town. Her voice rose, its target clear. Yes, I'm a witch, and I'm proud to be one. Raven's voice was clear and calm. She spoke slowly and clearly, holding her place as Grant moved to look at her. But if I heard my dog barking and whining, I'd at least have gone to see what was wrong with him. Unlike some, I care about the innocent. I don't go around making baseless accusations, and I certainly don't hurt animals. But if you push me far enough, I will protect myself. She stared down the other woman until Stevenson pursed her lips and looked away. Published by Melange Books.